Chicago and the Philippines. A comprehensive review of the week's special community events, featuring many exciting personalities, handled by the most professional Chicago Philippine Reports TV staff. Metro Manila and the nearby province of Laguna will still remain under lockdown but under a more lenient one. Starting Saturday until the end of August, these areas will be placed under a modified enhanced community quarantine, the second strictest lockdown classification. Bataan will also be placed under MECQ beginning August 23rd. But unlike the previous MECQ in April, where alfresco dining in restaurants was allowed, dine-in services will still be prohibited in areas under MECQ this time. Personal care services, including beauty salons, barber shops, and nail spas, are also still not allowed. Payagan na po kami, kahit yung gupit-gupit lang po, magbukas lang po yung salon. Kasi yun lang po ang pinagkukuha na namin ng ikabubuhay, kahit 30% lang po. Kagaya po nun dati na nakaraan na March. Religious gatherings will remain virtual. However, quarantine passes are no longer required. The chairman of the Metro Manila Council says local government units may impose granular lockdowns in areas with high infection rate. Talaga po nga, binabalansi po talaga ng MMC, pati ng IATF, yun pong ating pong programa pang kalusugan, pati po sa ating ekonomiya. The slight easing of the restriction comes even as some experts believe the country has yet to see the desired effects of the hard lockdown. I don't think it's working right now. Ngayon, sa dami ng lumalabas, uh, and you have a highly transmissible uh, variant na Delta. According to the Employers Confederation of the Philippines, workers must not be restricted from working and earning a living as those most affected by the lockdown are the poor. The group believes the government should focus on the public's strict compliance with minimum health protocols. We have to learn how to live, to live. with the virus. At yan, okay. wrap up your facilities para hindi ka na overwhelm. Yun ang yun sekreto yan. Hindi yung lockdown ng lockdown. The group Defend Jobs Philippines agrees, saying instead of implementing lockdowns, the government should upgrade the healthcare system. Ang solution talaga dyan, paulit-ulit namin sinasabi, yung medical uh, approach kailangan i-upgrade ng pamahalaan. Kasi kahit anong uh, tipo ng lockdown yan, paulit-ulit, pero yung, yung medical approach, hindi mo naman sinasabay, hindi mo ina-upgrade. Magpapaulit-ulit po tayo na tataas ang COVID-19 case. Tapos lockdown. So, Presidential advisor for entrepreneurship Joey Concepcion is confident that as Metro Manila de-escalates to MECQ, giving fully vaccinated individuals greater mobility will help spur economic growth in the country. Yung suggestion namin na uh, i-focus natin dito sa NCR, kung uh, i-hit nila yung 50% population protection, ibig sabihin nun, 50% of the LGUs in uh, Metro Manila are fully vaccinated, then they can allow the business establishments like malls, restaurants, uh, uh, spas, etc. to already open no? for only the fully vaccinated. He says the vaccination bubble must be implemented starting September when 50% of Metro Manila residents are already fully vaccinated. Marikina City allocated 150 million pesos for COVID vaccine procurement this year, but it is still waiting for the bulk of delivery of AstraZeneca vaccines. Multi-party agreements, or MPA, for its procurement of additional COVID jabs from Novavax and Sinopharm are still on hold. Unfortunately, hanggang ngayon, wala pa ring, uh, delivery at yung iba nga, naghihintay pa rin ng EUA. Despite this, Marikina City has administered first dose on 94% of its eligible population from COVID jabs procured by the national government and donated by other countries. But Teodoro asserts it is still important for local governments to be given the opportunity to procure additional vaccines for their own supply. Mahirap na umasang bibigyan, tapos maraming, maraming nangangailangan, maraming nagkakaagawan ng uh, resources. Some business groups share the sentiment after the MPA of some 300 private firms for the procurement of more COVID jabs remain unsigned. Vaccine czar Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. explained some manufacturers have suspended vaccine orders via MPAs, while other COVID jabs have yet to secure an emergency use authorization. Any 
potential source of vaccine should be welcome for us right now because it's really critical that we accelerate our vaccination. So if there are any pending MPAs, I think it would be good if they could be approved. Uh, assuming, of course, that all the barriers to their approval can be resolved. We need more, considering that we have not even go to the children and there might even be a booster need eventually. Marinduque Governor Presbitero Velasco, who is also president of the League of Provinces in the Philippines, finds no fault on the part of the pandemic task force in the delayed execution of tripartite agreements. There's no use in uh, signing the tripartite agreement uh, if uh, these uh, requirements have not yet been complied. And uh, more so with uh, respect to the supply of uh, the vaccine. In case the country misses its COVID vaccination target dates, the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry appeals to the government to remove lockdowns from its response options and implement stricter health protocols instead. Galvez assures LGUs and private firms the government has procured more than enough COVID jabs for all Filipinos. Scientific ang ating approach sa, ano eh, sa pag-distribute ng bakuna. Kinocompute namin ang lahat ng mga provinces, yung mga day to last nila. We are encouraging all the, you know, the political parties to unite uh, in this uh, time of pandemic. Uh, nakikita natin na uh, may mga iba na talagang uh, hindi binibigyan yung hindi ka lang kalyado. Ang ano natin is dapat uh, pantay-pantay, we have to be fair. Dapat uh, wala yung bias, wala yung pagkakampi-kampi sa, sa bakuna. The Philippines on Friday morning received an additional 582,500 doses of AstraZeneca's COVID vaccine procured by the private sector and local governments through a tripartite deal. Ito kasi procure na to, 80% LGUs. I think there are 39 LGUs. So pag hati hati na to, it will be proportionate sa order nila. Another 739,200 doses of Sinopharm's COVID jabs donated by China arrived Friday night. The new shipments bring to more than 47.2 million the total COVID vaccine doses delivered to the Philippines. Via Times, vital news, vibrant views for the Filipino-Asian communities in Chicago. Via Times, for your most interesting and exciting reading and your party coverages. Via Times has very interesting columnists. You name it, Via Times has it. Law, Filipino news, dentistry, immigration, humor, serious opinions, health, beauty, mysticism, bata corner, showbiz, and intelligent written editorials. Call Via Times at 773-866-0811. Maganda ka po po sa inyo lahat and welcome to Veronica's segment of the show today. I have a very exciting personality. He is a medical practitioner, um, a very handsome doctor from Los Angeles, and his name is Dr. Ran McLean. Dr. Ran McLean is the Chief Medical Officer of LCR Health, based in Los Angeles, doctor? Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. Well, as we all know, it's summertime here in Chicago and all over. And um, and uh, uh, Dr. Uh, McLean will be giving us some tips on um, some physical injuries that some people uh, encounter because of the activities, summer activities that they enjoy doing, but somehow, whether you're a professional or, um, or uh, uh, an, an amateur athlete, somehow you run across some accidents, okay? And now, Dr. McLean is here to talk to us about how to handle those injuries or accidents that you encounter. And um, he will, here are some good tips from Dr. McLean. I welcome to our show, Dr. McLean. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing fine. Thank you for having me. Okay. So uh, you are here to talk about some of these uh, physical injuries that some people encounter um, in their uh, pursuit of healthy and fit body. Yeah, the most frequent uh, injury, and I'm using a general category of injury because it can be a broad stroke, is because of overuse. 
if you're in Chicago and you've suffered through a, a cold winter and the, and the climate finally warms up, uh, you're eager to get, out, to get outside and oftentimes maybe a little too eager so you can overdo it. And that's probably the number one source of injury is, is overtraining, actually not in the official sense, but, but uh, going forward a little too fast, a little too hard in the beginning. And of course, uh, the, the signs, the early signs of that are, are soreness. But if you continue to, to train um, at a level where you haven't really warmed up uh, adequately, I don't mean just on the day of, but you know, ramping your way up through summer to what might be your personal best, then it can go beyond just general soreness to an actual injury, an overuse injury. And we probably all experienced it. Um, and, and that's the worst thing that can happen, right? You're eager to get out and, and, and enjoy the outside and get your exercise. And then if you overdo it, you're on the sidelines nursing an injury. So again, the, the most important thing when you're starting up again is to do it gradually so that you avoid the overuse injury. You pay attention to what's going on with your body. Remember that the days are, are, are passing. And so it's only getting uh, more difficult to recover as we age. So, you know, be a little bit more careful as you start up. And then there's things that you can do that you can concentrate on when you are working out that are good for you, no matter what. We all have to recover properly from exercise. And that involves eating properly, eating nutritious foods that can support muscle recovery. And that includes, um, you know, enough food. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to start dieting and in other words, dieting to lose weight while you're starting to exercise. Maybe it's a good idea to start exercising first and then start trimming the calories because those calories are needed to get you ready for tomorrow's activities. And then of course, in terms of tomorrow's activities, one of the most important and yet overlooked aspects is getting enough rest. You have to get your seven to nine hours of sleep each night unless you have a very, very rare gene mutation where you can use or get away with say uh, anything less than that. And it's different for everybody. It might be seven for you, eight for someone else, but seven to nine is generally the, the requisite number of hours of good quality sleep. That's where we do all the recovery work. Um, so you can write the prescription for, for better fitness during the day, working out and eating right, but you fill the prescription at night. How about uh, hydrating yourself? Well, that's part of what I would refer to as the nutritional aspect. Absolutely have to rehydrate yourself. Um, as little as 2% dehydration in the body can affect any person, uh, you know, athletes or, or non-athletes uh, by a significant amount can really decrease performance. And it's just not good for you to be dehydrated. Things don't work as well when you're dehydrated. So definitely pay attention to that, particularly as you come off of the winter months and get into the hotter humid months when you're losing more fluid. How, oh, oh, okay, for the, for the a person to get ready for the uh, kind of activities that he's gonna be uh, in, involving in, uh, what kind of, uh, there should be a warm up, right? And what, what kind of warm up do they must do or must follow? Yeah, um, you know, when you were 15, 16 years old, you can jump out of bed and, and start riding your bike first thing. But as we get older, and even when we're younger, it's still always a good idea to start with a warm up of anywhere from as short as five minutes to uh, 15, 20 minutes. It all depends upon the weather conditions. If it's really cold and windy outside, you might require a longer warm up than if it's already warm. And uh, the idea to uh, don't, don't shock your body into movement uh, that's unexpected and, and overly intense. You want to gradually uh, get moving so that you don't cause injury. Get moving. Oh, wow. wow. Whether you're a, an athlete or a dancer or a bowler, somehow you really must uh, warm up your body before in involving straight into the activities, right? Yes, absolutely. You want to warm up at a smaller percentage, obviously, of what you would be maximizing your efforts toward, you know, whether, yeah, it's bowling, darts, running, bicycling, whatever the sport may be, you want to gradually uh, ramp up to your maximal effort. Oh, in your experience, doctor, uh, uh, 
of course, uh, you you would know what, which injuries are really or particularly common in the summertime that people suffer. Well, it's generally sports related. You know, for those that want the ease of just putting on some running shoes and, and running out the door and, and going for a run, a lot of the injuries are lower extremity injuries like Achilles tendon, uh, ankle and foot injuries. But remember, the, the ankle bones connected to the knee bone, which is connected to the hip bone, et cetera. So you can have injuries that work their way up the chain, depending upon your posture, how well you warmed up or not. But generally speaking, for example, for a runner, I would say their lower extremity injuries, but including uh, lower back injuries. Uh, for a tennis player, you know, it might be different. Uh, certainly there's, an, there's lower extremity involvement, but then you're swinging a racket. So the classic tennis elbow uh, is involved there. And that, that, that segues into another um, topic. Part of warming up and warming down afterwards includes stretching. Uh, injuries can occur because of imbalances in muscles. So for example, with a tennis elbow injury, that's often caused because uh, not just uh, because you haven't warmed up, but because you're, you're, um, they're, they're called flexor muscles in the forearm are overly tight compared to the extensor muscles on the outer part of the forearm. So that's just an example of uh, a sport specific injury that can be uh, contained, if you will, by, by doing the proper warm up and the proper warm down to include stretching after the activity. Going back to uh, the diet that you were talking about, is there any particular suggestion that the, um, the athlete itself uh, could take or uh, put themselves in a diet? Sure. Uh, the, what your grandmother probably told you still rings true. Lots of colors on the plate is important, okay? A balanced meal, including uh, enough fats, enough proteins, and enough carbohydrates, what we call the macronutrients. Um, and it's going to be different for everyone depending upon how, the, how they chose their parents, but also the activities, the time of year. But, uh, you know, what we always refer to as a well-balanced meal is important. And particularly for athletes, I would say, you know, despite the benefits of, say, intermittent fasting, smaller, more frequent meals tend to benefit the athlete more. Anyone who's, you know, getting out and, and engaging in activities because you want to have a steady flow of energy to help fuel the activity as well as fuel the recovery of the, from the activity and you don't want to ever eat too much at once because then you run the risk of depositing some of that fuel as fat rather than in muscle tissue for the liver. So um, aside from that, you mentioned earlier hydration. If you drink lots and lots of fresh water, if you don't have enough of the electrolytes in your system, the salts we call them, and they're sodium salts, the, the, what we refer to as table salt, but there are other salts like potassium salts, calcium salts, magnesium salts, other electrolytes that are important. Of course, we get a lot of those from vegetables and, and some from nuts. But if you don't have those in your system, the water won't stay in you. It'll go right through you. So it's important to have a well-balanced diet so that the water that you're drinking stays with you. In other words, be ready to indulge yourself with fruits and vegetables and lots of water. Yes, right. ma'am, exactly. Okay. All right, uh, Doctor, one last question. We're running out of time. Um, uh, what do you do when you have, uh, with the emergency cases of athletes, the first thing that you do, or do you suggest the emergency, well, emergency cases? Like uh, maybe they just sprain themselves or... There's an acronym that makes it easy to remember called RICE. Rest, ice, compression, and elevation. Typically, that's a good start for any injury. Rest, ice, compression, and, and elevation. Information? No, and elevation. elevation. So, for example, oh, obviously... I heard about that from a nurse before. Uh, the good one. Though. Yes, yes. And easy to remember. Easy to remember. Ice right away, right? Yeah, of course, the easy part is if you've injured yourself, you should probably rest first, right? And then ice helps reduce inflammation 
and can help the, the area heal because initially it'll shrink the blood flow. Then, yeah, as you know, in Chicago, once you go outside for a bit, then your cheeks turn red because your body uh, reacts by opening up the blood vessels and getting more blood flow with fresh nutrients into the area and as well as getting some of the, the, the results of injury out of the area. And then compression also helps prevent against uh, uh, inflammation and so does elevation. When you keep um, an injured body part above the level of the heart, it's less likely to fill with blood and therefore excess fluid. Wow, very interesting information. Oh, how about applying uh, something hot? When, when do you apply that? Generally speaking, uh, hot is not your best bet in the early going. Uh, every injury is different, but typically at least three days of Icing only is preferential. Afterwards, then using alternating heat with ice is often a good idea. Again, the idea being to get blood moving in and out of the area to both supply fresh nutrients and get rid of old, what we call cytokines, the, the things that um, are there as a result of injury and cause inflammation and pain. Very interesting. Okay, doctor, uh, one, last word or one last tip that you can you can um, tell to our viewing audience also i have uh, one question are you on uh, in private private practice or are you are you uh, um, connected with a hospital i'm in private practice here in santa monica uh, regenerative, regenerative and sports medicine is the name of our practice and um yeah, we were uh, well, actually we're there and in Manhattan Beach. If anyone wants to uh, come on out here, the weather's fantastic uh, all year round. All right, Santa Monica, California. What's the name <laughs> of your uh, clinic? Regenerative and Sports Medicine. All right, you heard that from Dr. McLean. You look for Dr. McLean uh, if you get uh, if you get yourself injured um, in your summer activities. Dr. McLean, uh, one last tip that do you think is important to our viewers who are uh, athletes and or if not athletes are very active in their summer activities out there. Well, I would say it's always important to keep your goals in mind. That helps motivate you and helps you drive. But at the same time, don't overdo it. Make it something you enjoy so that it's not just a part of the year effort and something that you do for the rest of your life because exercise is the great equalizer. It helps uh, prevent all kinds of diseases and uh, the very definition of life includes movement. So, uh, you know, stay away from injury, uh, you know, moderate your activity, keep your goals in mind, but don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. You heard that, right? Don't overdo it. <laughs> Everything is just, just try to stay in the medium lane, right? Yes, ma'am. Not overdoing it. All right. Very good. Dr. McLean, I really appreciate you girl, gracing our show today. At maraming, maraming salamat. That is thank you, thank you very much in our language. Well, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Anytime and um, enjoy your beautiful weather out there. <laughs> In you <Yeah>, well, <laughs> have it. <laughs> well, all right, we both are longing for a Maui weather too, right? With your beautiful backdrop of Maui. All right, bye. Bye, thank you. fun in the Philippines. Magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat and welcome to Veronica's segment of the show. Today, I have a very guapo, guapito uh, person, very familiar in our show. He used to be uh, on our show until he 
he retired or busy somewhere. Uh, well, this guy's name is Nick Vera Perez. No, he needs no more further introduction, but I still will introduce him. Nick has disappeared for a while in our show, but uh, I know that he got so busy uh, doing recording and concerts in the Philippines. Um, and he's such a good son, been taking care of his sick mom and also very, and also studying for his master's degree. Believe it or not, this man is not, is not really idle. That's why he disappeared, because he got so busy. And I'm really so happy to introduce him and to interview him today uh, in this uh, CPR TV, uh, Veronica segment of the show. Um, Nick, Mr. <laughs> Vera Perez is also the man of the year of the Chicago Filipino Asian American Hall of Fame. I don't know, I cannot stop introducing this guy, but let us hear from him. Uh, Mr. Nick Vera Perez. Wow. Uh, Hi. Our show. Kumusta? Kumusta? How are you, Mami V? To all the viewers of CPR TV as usual, uh, magandang araw po, wherever you are around the world. Nanonood ngayon. Um, Please accept my good morning, good afternoon, or good evening sa inyong lahat kung ano mang ginagawa nyo. All right. Welcome to the show. Salamat. Thank you for having me, Mami V. Nick, I really miss you. I haven't seen you for ages. Yeah, and, yeah. I see you on Facebook. Uh, you, are, you are very, very active in Facebook. And so far, the, um, uh, very, very active in your uh, I don't know what's uh, this Kumu. What is Kumu? It's a it's a social app, a social media app. Parang Facebook din. Uh, kaya lang it gives artists time to stream. Uh, it's actually open to everybody, and if you want to earn, you can also earn there. So, ang maganda lang don. Um, dahil sa pandemic, you know, we are forced now to do whatever we can on our homes. So, yung app na yun talagang tumulong sa akin. Aside, it's like putting Putting, ano, it's like putting uh, Facebook Live. Yun. Kaya lang ang difference. Ang Kumu, ang dami talagang ano, mga viewers doon. And then they love when when you sing. Actually, marami pang app, Mami V. Eh. Merong Bigo Live. May, uh, basta like there's eight of them that are doing the same thing. You know, you stream, they get, you get paid. And then uh, you get more followers. But if they also don't like you, wala din nangyayari. You know? Nagiging tambay na lang. Yeah. Kumu is very nice. Uh, you know what, Nick? I salute you for being so uh, tech savvy. And uh, thank I you, thank you for to be like you. Um, I'm behind. I'm behind in tech. But uh, so far, you've been talking to me about Kumu, and I have not, I don't even know how to get that uh, app. Anyway, so far, you've been so successful in doing that. Uh, all thank over you. the world? Is this all over the world or just? Yeah. You? It's a it's a Filipino app. However, it's based in San Francisco or California. So, uh, but I also heard um, it's owned by Toy Montero. Kasama siya dun sa mga owners. I just heard. I don't know if it's real. But then, uh, it's it's been streamed all over the world. Madaming you know, pero mostly Filipinos. Pero makita mo, marami na rin white and different races getting involved with Kumu. It's a free app. You can download. Actually, nag-umpisa ito sa Android, hindi sa iPhone. So, it's an app now na nandun na sa iPhone. You download it, you register for free, and then you start streaming. You learn along the way. So, so far, many Filipino artists are also uh, yeah. on, all right? Nandun si Regine, si Ogie Alcacid, Gary Valenciano, Daryl Ong. Halos, halos na lahat eh, kasi they, that, that became their um, um, platform to be showcased kasi wala na masyadong alam mo na gathering sa mga big screens so Kumu was the next alternative for the Philippines yeah. okay very good and uh, now Nick uh, you are planning or ha you have planned or maybe you have changed your plan to 
have recordings and concerts in the Philippines. Can you update us about your plans? Yes, um, it was actually set last year, May 2020, at Luxon Hotel Grand Ballroom. But then COVID came in, so we postponed. In fact, the first change we have was December 25 this year. So it will be changed to December 25. It's my first Christmas going home after 28 years in the U.S. Kasi I always go home every May. So unang-unang Pasko ko yun. And then um, kung mag-stabilize siya by November, we will push through going home. If not mag-stabilize, we will still go home siguro. But then it's just like vacation lang. And then no, no gathering, no shows. Yun lang ang nangyayari. Yeah. All right. It, it, uh, well, yeah. but, uh, regarding your your recordings, you have a listing of uh, yes recordings that you sent to me, and can you please uh, discuss it for our viewing audience? Yes, finally, um, we are bound to release two more uh, records, uh, and it will be a twin twin album coming out. So dalawa. It's my second album po. Ang title is NVP 1.0, NVP Once More. Uh, it has 12 tracks, all original, 6 Tagalog, 6 English. Walang itapon, Mami V. Walang itapon sa mga kanta. That, hindi katulad sa mga ibang, ibang mga albums na, you know, you only like three or four. Ito lahat as in, they can pass the soundtrack. Pwedeng i-soundtrack sa mga teleserye. And then, putting a soundtrack sa mga big screens. It's it's a very compact uh, music uh, composed by Adonis Tabanda. And then, um, uh, it will be digitally released over 220 platforms worldwide. So, kahit may mga countries kasi walang iTunes, pero meron silang Kubos, o kaya meron silang Amazon, Google Music, so they can download the songs there. And then, it, this will be released po, ang second album, second or three weeks from now and then ang album number three is my first christmas album has 10 songs anim doon ng original ang apat naman i'm so thankful pina revive nila sa akin but in a different format so you will hear i'll be home for christmas in jazz you will hear jingle bell rock in jazz you will hear oh holy night in a solemn contemporary um, way and then you will also hear the most wonderful time of the year in jazz. Can you believe, Mami V? <laughs> Lahat ito ginawang jazz, which is very nice, very nice. So I'm just so thankful, you know, pinaiba nila yung version sa akin. So I'm, I said, I'm willing to do that. And then this will be released around November this year. So twin albums. And then the contract says two albums every year. So next year, lalabas yung fourth and fifth album. Kasi yung fourth album, ang title ko is Mga Lihim ng Puso. Eight songs na nandito sa akin, hindi ko pa naaaral, Mami V. Kasi pinapalish ko pa yung Pasko, yung Christmas songs, para i -re record ko siya by September. And then alam nyo naman, when you record, it has four stages. You know, you record, you edit, you mix, and then you master. So sa itong album 2 na ito is nasa master stage, katatapos lang. Kaya ang releasing stage ngayon is undergoing mga how legit are the songs, how original are they, before they get released to the crowd. So yung mga ganong process, Mami V. Kaya I'm also planning, we will concretely, perhaps, huh? perhaps, we will concretely stabilize NVP One World as a music distributing recording company na very soon. So we are on the negotiation because you have to read like 12 contracts. So pag nagmaterialize lahat yan, we will not just be entertainment para sa showcase, we will also be a recording company na. Parang Sony Records, parang ganun. It will be NVP One Music. So hopefully, uh, yun ang mga future plans. Uh, dati wala yan sa mga plano, pero yun know, unti-unti, di ba? As you go along, you will see potentials and then you grab it. So yun naman so far. Sounds so, I hope so exciting. Nila. Very, yeah, very them. exciting. But then, so uh, when can we, you give us a sampling of your song? Ah, pwede ngayon, Mami V. Pwede ngayon, ah, no? ah! <laughs> I was thinking of... Uh, Ibibigay ko sa iyo yung, uh, yung kanta na very... Yung career single po, ang title is um, Laging Ikaw. Ang Laging Ikaw is... is ito yung sinasabi ko parang teleserye. Sa umpisa, parang hangin lang ang pagkakanta. Pero pan ng huli, alam mo naman mga Filipino, 
mga high notes, yung mga ganun darating na yon. Minsan nga nag-perform ako ng sample. Uh, pagdating nung high notes, nahulog yung backdrop ko, mami. <laughs> Kasi gumagal. Lumalayo ako sa mic. Lumalayo ako sa mic kaya nahulog yung backdrop. Anyway, ah... Uh, chandelier. <laughs> yung, yung chandelier. Yeah, talaga, kakapon yun. And then I will also be sa FYE channel, which is an ABS-CBN channel, maybe a week from now. And they're trying to schedule me after the school. So sabi ko, I cannot do weekdays. Kailangan talaga weekends. So sa ngayon, pwede na weekdays kasi off ako for two weeks. Kaya they immediately contacted me. Oh, tapos ka na sa finals mo. Pwede ka na mag <laughs> So right. I'm happy. Okay, here it is. Kung ready ka na. Okay, ready. Yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, title po nito is Lagi Ikaw. Uh, sana magustuhan ninyo. Live na live po. Gusto ko lumulunda sa saya Bawat araw ay laging naiisip ka Ikaw ang nahanap sa pagsikap ng nangyarap. Gusto kitang kapili na aking matanaw. Na sana'y nalang ang aking puso. Sa isip ko ay lagi ikaw ang ako. Lagi ikaw ang hanap. That is laging ikaw. Fantastic, Nick. Thank you, thank you. Is that song uh, 
your own uh, lyrics and uh, yes and um uh, background i mean uh, music, music background? yes uh, oh, like, it's uh, all original all original may mga ang susunod sa album kasama ito if this is the carrier single laging ikaw ang dami sa kumo ang dami nagre-react they, they like the minus one na daw they wanna sing it sabi ko wag niyo ako unahan <laughs> I-release mo na. Ang magsakir chandelier. Oh my God. Congratulations. I'm so you. proud of you. You're, you're so multi-talented. And Thank you, Mami. Also, uh, is that a recording? Is that a part of the twin recording? Yes. Kasama po ito sa, sa second album, NVP 1.0. And then lalabas ito sa iTunes, sa Spotify, two to three weeks from now. As in, siguro nga, bago nga mag-September eh. Uh, we're just waiting for the complete, um, yung processing na dinadaan niya ngayon kasi ready na yung master na lahat, di ba? So clearance na lang. Once matapos na yung clearance po, Mami Bri, doon na. It will have an opening. Yeah, how many songs so far uh, you've recorded? Twelve. And then and I still have to record ten more. And then, para maging 22 songs. Dami. Nick, I thought you were busy taking care of your mom, busy uh, with your studies. And where do you find time to do all this? Kasi alam mo, ang, ang tingin ko ganito, uh, kasi nagkataon lang siguro, knowledge is power. Kung alam mo yung aspects ng tao, yung needs natin, you know, may mga sexual needs, psychological needs, biophysical needs, if you know all of them, you have to satisfy each of them every single day. Dahil kung hindi, dyan mo makikita ang mga mentally unstable people, you know? Dyan mo nakikita mga taong very insecure kasi they don't get to, to fill in yung mga tasks na dapat natin gagawin. So sa akin, Mami V, I find that ang pinaka comforting sa akin is music. And then, so halimbawa, like now, I'm talking to you, Si mama nasa baba, nag-gym exercise with my niece. So nagkataon kasi yung niece ko tumutulong na sa akin ngayon. They're here. Pero temporary lang, three months, you know, and then they go home. And then so far, si mama din nagiging very independent na rin. But I made sure, uh, meron akong sistema, like 7 a.m., this is what you have to do with mom. Mga medications niya, 8 o'clock. And then how do you check your blood pressure bago mo ibigay yung meds, check mo yung blood sugar. Tapos lahat yun, i-combine mo yun. Tapos nagdagahanap ako, Mami V, ng mga butas na time. Pag, pag sinabi kong butas mga 3 to 4 hours, that's when I inject yung aking music sa mga ano. Wow. Yeah. On, on top of that, ang hirap, ano, ang pinakamahirap, Mami V, is, is meron pa akong garden which requires 30 to 45 minutes watering each porch. Eh, dalawa yun, di ba? Sa likod tsaka sa harap ng lawn. Kaya... Doon, doon medyo nahirapan ako lately. Pero so far naman, uh, kaya naman, you know, it occupies my time. Yes. Uh, and nag uh, gardening pa, nag uh, house cleaning, and nag uh, studying, and uh, taking care of mom. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then... Um, masama I, pa ang loob ko, Mami V, pag what? ano. Masama ang loob ko pag dalawang mali, tatlong mali sa test. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, my. Kasi sa akin, Mami B, pag may mali ka sa exam, and then like ako, no, I resigned sa nursing completely, babalik naman ako pag yung graduate ako ng master's, but it's not gonna be on bedside. Pero sa akin is, kung wala kang ginagawa masyado like before, like when you work eight hours, there should not no reason for you to have a mistake sa exam. Yun ang sa akin. Kasi of all the times na nagbabantay ako kay mama, consider ko yun parang dead time. So I'm gonna read, keep reading. Ganun. Kaya kung may isang dalawang mali, say, oh my God, I'm getting old. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, you are such a perfectionist and um, you know that, right? Yeah, um, pero hindi ko na lang dinidibdib. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Kawa. okay, we're running out of time. Uh, thank you, thank you. Want to mention something about your upcoming concerts? Yeah, I would like to um, I would like to invite everybody to follow me on all my social media handles. I isa lang po ang social media handles ko. Karamihan po may blue check meaning verified. Uh, all Nick Vera Perez. So kung may mga nagpapanggap na Nick Vera Perez outside, which meron, uh, do not 
conform to them. Kasi Mami V, balita ko yung ibang Nick Verapes nangihingi daw ng pera. So if you don't talk to me straight, yung may blue check, hindi po ako yon Mga poser po yun. So uh, I remember si Mami V Scammers. naging victim na rin. Scammers. Naging victim na rin si Mami V before. And then si Daddy Joe naman lately. So kahit wala na si Daddy Joe, you know, ini-scam pa rin siya. Can you believe this? Inahak siya. Inahak siya. Yo, me and Ron yeah. was like, Ron, look at this. So um, wow. anyway, um, um, inviting all of you to follow Nick Vera Perez. Ang shows po is mamaya, uh, well, basically mamaya 10 p.m. sa Chicago or 11 a.m. sa Manila. Mayroon pa kami sa Kumu, which is a solo stream all dedicated for the charities ng Smile World. And then after that, um, meron tayo sa Facebook Live, but this is also ticketed at 1499, which will be September 12th. Album listening, if you want to listen to the album po, uh, you can really go to the page of NDP One World and then just press get access and then just pay. It's only $14.99 compared sa first album. Naalala mo, Mami V, first album natin, it's $299 per ticket, right? Kasi may dinner naman yun and everything. So ito, it's Facebook Live, $14.99. So I hope you guys can come. Just share a moment. It's only 30 minutes. Yan. Maraming salamat kay Mami B for having me and sala sa inyo for, for having the time to listen and watch the show. Maraming salamat po. Maraming, maraming salamat din sa iyo, Nick. And uh, I hope to see you uh, in the very near future. Uh, yes. With, with Mami. Magkita tayo, Mami V. Pag magkita tayo, set up ko yung V8 mo and yung microphone mo. So you can play everything aside from yung mga background mo. You will have all these sounds. You will have this. Mga yan, magkakaroon ka niyan lahat. It's very easy. It's like eating breakfast lang. Without preparing the breakfast. Ganun uh, lang kadali. Well, I need to <laughs> set it up. I, I would not know. I really am bad in uh, technology. And uh, I, I need your help. Yes. Okay. Lalo ng streaming, alam mo, magandang contents ng CPR TV. I think it's time for you to, at the same time, earn while doing it. Kasi, you know, Kumu will be the place. On top of that, yung mga YouTube mo, it would be so nice to do that. You know, materialize everything. Kasi darating sa point na whether they watch or not, dumarami rin ng watchers with their friends and families. You, that really helps. Oh, yes. Okay. Teach me, please. Okay. Yes, yes. When we see each other, yeah, I hope in the very near future. Oh, oh, oh. All right. You take care and send my regards you. to your mom. And maraming maraming salamat. Bye. Bye. Thank you, for Thank you. We would like to welcome all of you to Baladna Jewelry. We have a very big selection of 21 karat gold jewelry imported from the Middle East from Dubai, Saudi, and Bahrain. And we have a very big selection of diamond. We offer free financing for six months. And uh, we have a layaway system, which you can leave your stuff for three months. We repair gold and we buy old gold. Welcome to Baladna Jewelry. Salamat Bo. Good afternoon, this is Bridget Carino Quetter bringing you this week's local news from our community. Since being given a choice by the U.S. Supreme Court's landmark decision in Janus v. AFSCME, over 22,000 teachers and other public education workers across Illinois have exercised their right not to join or pay a union. These numbers come from the reports the teachers' unions themselves filed with the U.S. Department of Labor. The Illinois Federation of Teachers, the state affiliate of the Chicago Teachers Union, reported it had a total of 101,046 teachers and other public employees paying dues or fees in 2017, the last full year of reporting before the Janus decision. In its latest filing, it reported just 82,453 members, representing a loss of 18,593 people paying dues or fees to the unions. The global movement towards sustainability has made slow fashion fundamental, with ethical shopping very in vogue. 
Every week sees more brands delivering sustainable collections and offering ethical promises. The study reviewed monthly searches across 64 countries for eight terms focused on sustainable sh online shopping to uncover the top territories. It found that the U.S. is the best country for sustainable shopping with 29,700 monthly searches. They beat Canada, who bank only 2,580 monthly searches for eco-friendly purchases. In second place is the UK with 24,500 monthly searches. North America is the second most sustainable continent with consumers making 42,430 monthly searches for sustainable purchases. The Illinois Commerce Commission is announcing the addition of a 464 area code to South Suburban counties presently served by the 708 area code. The 464 area code will overlay the existing territory in order to supplement the telephone number supply. The 464 area code will be available for assignment only when all assignable prefixes in the 708 have been exhausted, which is not expected to occur until January of 2022. The 708 area code serves most of the western and southern Cook County and eastern and southern Will County, including cities and communities such as Aylesip, Beecher, Bellwood, Berwyn, Blue Island, Bridgeview, Broadview, Burbank, Calumet City, Chicago Heights, Chicago Ridge, Country Club Hills, Crest Hill, Crete, Dalton, Elmwood Park, Evergreen Park, Flossmoor, Forest Park, Glenwood, Harvey, Harwood Heights, and other South Suburban regions. Attorney General Kwame Ravul, as part of a coalition of 22 attorneys general, filed an amicus brief opposing Georgia's discriminatory law that would make it more difficult for millions of Georgians, especially black Georgians, to vote. Raul and the coalition specifically pushed back against misguided efforts to dismiss the federal government's lawsuit against Georgia, particularly at this threshold stage. In an amicus brief filed in the United States v. Georgia, Raul and the attorneys general explained why the U.S. Justice Department sufficiently claimed that Georgia intentionally discriminated against black and minority voters and why the case should proceed to trial. The brief also argues that Georgia's purported reason for adopting the law to prevent voter fraud does not hold up under scrutiny and is really about hobbling the voting power of black Georgians. On Friday, August 13, 2021, the Second District Appellate Court of Illinois affirms the expansive protections of the Illinois Human Rights Act for transgender individuals. In Hobby Lobby Stores, Inc. v. Somerville, the court addressed an issue of first impression holding that transgender individuals in Illinois have the right to access restrooms corresponding to their gender identity. Megan Somerville, a transgender woman, filed a charge with the Illinois Department of Human Rights against her employer, Hobby Lobby, for not allowing her to use the women's restroom. The court agreed that Hobby Lobby violated the act both as an employer and as a place of public accommodation by discriminating against Ms. Somerville based on her gender identity. I'm pleased to see the court recognize Hobby Lobby's stance against its employee as what it is, discrimination based on gender identity, said Governor J.B. Pritzker. That's all for today. Thank you for watching our news this week. This is Bridget. See you next time. Well, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. This is Melody Dizon, and as you can tell, we are in the forest. Where Which forest am I in? It's uh, in the Virgin Islands, um, U.S. Virgin Islands. It's actually pretty cool, and we're doing some hiking and doing some trekking to lead us hopefully to the beach. So even if uh, I'm on vacation or away, still got to do what you got to do for your health, right? So we got water, we have food, we have our chair, we have our sun visor, our sunblock, what else? And lip uh, things and chairs. So anyway, I'm going to show you what you're about to see as we exit the trail. I'll see you in a bit. Thanks.
We are so nearing the beach, so we can't wait to get in the water because I'm drenching with sweat. Oh. Ah. Here we are, all together. Look at that. Uh. And here we are. Look at that. Blue, turquoise, pristine, OMG, nature. I love nature. So, ready to check with back. I'll check with you guys again. <laughs> and so, we reach the famous public access to the honeymoon beach. I wonder why they call it honeymoon. Maybe because it's so private. I don't know. We'll check it out together. Come on, guys. Oh. Look at that beauty. It's unreal, but we're here. Yep. Over there. Yeah. So, 